Good evening. Good to be here talking about God's Word, getting into it, starting in the Gospel of John, chapter 13. We're continuing going through the Holy Week journey, working our way towards, you know, Good Friday, Easter morning. This is where we're headed. But today we find ourselves on Holy Thursday. We find ourselves at the beginning of, of things really starting to pick up speed. And so here we are in the Gospel of John, starting chapter 13. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, settle us down on this scripture. Help us to really understand what is going on in the story. Why is it important that these things were written down? What is it that we are to learn? What is it, Lord, that we are to see in ourselves when we look at the scriptures? When we read them, when we study them, it's amazing, Lord, what we find. Help us to see your hand move in this living word that we look at this evening. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. We find ourselves before the festival of Passover, chapter 13, verse 1. Jesus knew that his time had come. It was time for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in this world, he loved them fully. And so they were at an evening meal. And it says here, starting in chapter 13, verse 2, Jesus and his disciples were sharing the evening meal. The devil had already provoked Judas, Simon Iscariot's son, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew the Father had given him everything into his hands, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robes, picking up a linen towel, he tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he was wearing. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand what I'm doing now. But you will understand later. No, Peter said, you will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't have a place with me. Simon Peter said, Lord, not only my feet, but my hands and my head. Jesus responded, those who have bathed need only to have their feet washed because they are completely clean. You disciples are clean but not every one of you. He knew who would betray him. That's why he said, not every one of you is clean. After he washed the disciples' feet, he put on his robes, returned to his place at the table, and said to them, said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you speak correctly, because I am. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too must wash each other's feet. I have given you an example. Just as I have done, you must also do. I assure you, servants aren't greater than their masters, nor are those who sent greater than the one who sent them. Since you know these things, you will be happy if you do them. And so we see Jesus putting it all together for the disciples by simply showing them servanthood. Showing them what it means to serve each other. And then letting them realize that, you know what? You are cleansed, he says. You disciples are clean, but not every one of you. Right? There's some cleansings. The body just can't wash off. Right? And Jesus is talking about a spiritual clean. Not just a physical clean but a spiritual clean where is it with your soul tonight sitting around the table with Jesus that night there were a lot of souls burning some burning very hot some not so hot and some questioning where do you find yourself tonight if Jesus were to wash your feet how would you respond how would you feel, the Savior of the world, 
was wiping your feet. And he told them that this is what they must do. They must serve, not just be served, right? That they have come, that this is what Jesus does. And so we find ourselves that after he goes through the foot washing, he, 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 he announces who's his betrayer, right? And so we have in the end of chapter 13, the, the, the unveiling of, of the, the betrayer, he leaves, they move on in, in the, in the, in the conversation that John is outlining here, the series of events that are happening in that evening, they have a foot washing, you have the, the, the betrayer is called out, right? He, he, he's sent and, and he leaves. And now you find yourself that Judas is now gone. All of this is happening. And with Judas gone, we find ourselves in verse 31 of chapter 13. Jesus said, now the human one has been glorified and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify the human one in himself and will glorify him immediately. Little children, I am with you for only a little while longer. You will look for me, but just as I told the Jewish leaders, and I will tell you now where I'm going, you can't come. I give you a new commandment. Love each other, just as I have loved you. So you must also love each other. This is how everyone will know that you are my disciple, is when you love one another. Now here's Jesus breaking it down really, really easy for the disciples to understand at this point. He has everyone's attention. Judas has just left. Everybody's on Jesus. He's telling them this. Listen, I give you a new commandment. Love each other. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, so must you love each other. This is how everyone will know that you're my disciple, is when you love each other. This Easter season, as we're preparing for the death of the Savior and the resurrection on Easter Sunday, we have to realize that Jesus is setting in motion this great understanding of love and the depth that that causes people to go. We are to love each other. And when we love each other, friends, people see it. Right? People see the love that we have for each other. And then they'll know. Then they'll know. You know what? The truth of the matter is, love is a very hard thing. It's not always easy to love each other. And Jesus knew this as he was sitting in the room with all of these different disciples and their different personalities. And he was reminding them to love each other no matter what. You got to love each other. There's going to be some things that are going to happen. You got to love each other. That's when it matters, right? You got to love each other. It's going to get tough. He's trying to let them know that. And so we get to this that, that they'll know that, that, that you are a follower because you love each other. Simon Peter then says to Jesus, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, where I am going, you can't follow me now, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will give up my life for you. Jesus replied, I will give up, will you give up your life for me? I assure you that you will deny me three times before the rooster crows. He follows that right up by saying, do not be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. And then he goes into chapter 14, talking about my father's house has many rooms and I go to prepare a place and all of this stuff. These disciples, there's a lot happening. There's a lot of misunderstandings earthly kingdom heavenly kingdom what's happening what's going to happen this is preparing for battle and then people are getting excited 
scared, nervous, not really understanding fully what Jesus is talking about. But there's something big's going to happen and they're going to be involved in it. And they're all right here and they're boasting. And Jesus says, that, you know, you will deny me. And away they go, but don't be troubled. Don't live in fear. Trust in God. Trust also in me that I have prepared a place for you. This is what's coming out of the Passover meal, right? The, this is what John pulls out of there, of that dinner with friends. These are the things that we see. That you're to love each other. That you're to live for each other. That you don't need to live in fear or doubt because don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. There is a bigger plan. You don't always see it. The disciples didn't see it. And you know what, friends? Do we always see it? We're sitting here in the in the early months of, of 2020 with, with a national pandemic. There's a lot going on in our world, too. Just like going on here. There's always something. But Jesus is telling them. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. I have prepared a place. I've prepared a plan. I've got it. We're good. We're going to be okay. And I know right now in a world that we live in, these things seem very stressful because life can be. But do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus is in control. Jesus has us and he will take care of us. And he's trying to remind his disciples that this lesson is something that they're going to have to fall back on very soon when their faith is challenged. And so he continues to, to talk to them and encourage them in chapter 14. Okay, you can read that on your own. Same with chapter 15, 16, because we find that Jesus is now teaching. He's teaching, and in chapter 17, we get to where Jesus is praying. When Jesus finished teaching, he looked up to heaven and he said this. This is what Jesus said. This is, they're getting at the end of their evening meal, right? They're at the very end. Jesus has been teaching and talking and, and pouring himself out into his disciples. At the end, he prays. And he says, Father, the time has come. Glorify your son so that the son can glorify you. You gave him authority over everyone so that he could give eternal life to everyone you gave him. This is eternal life, to know you, to the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent. I have glorified you on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, glorify me in the present in this in your presence with the glory I share with you before the world was created. <coughs> and now it's down. They're listening to Jesus pray this to his father. And the rest of the prayer, all the way to where the, the, the evening culminates. Righteous Father. Even the world didn't know you, but I've known you. And these believers know that you sent me. I made your name known to them and will continue to make it known so that your love for me will be in them and I myself will be in them also. Jesus prayed for his disciples. At the end of the meal, those that were left. And said, I will be with you. I will be in you. I will be a part of you. Believe in me. Believe in me. And friends, that same connection that Jesus wanted with his disciples, that depth of belief in me. And I'm in you and you're in me. He wants with us. He wants us to walk with him that close. And so as 
the meal is over. They're at the end, right? They're just about to leave and, and head to the garden and pray in the garden and have the confrontation there. The last thing he tells them before they leave that room, according to the Gospel of John, is that I will be in you and I will be with you. When things are confusing, when things don't seem to be going the way that, that we want them to go or the way we think they should go, it's easy to doubt. It's easy to fear. It's easy to feel alone. And Jesus tells us that he is always there, always with us. Do not let your hearts be troubled. He encouraged them all the way up through that Monday, Thursday evening. The Passover meal, the changing of the, of the words, the whole thing. John pulls out a different message. A message that, that, of that intimate relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. And so as we prepare to move into to, to Good Friday and the trial and the arrest and the trial and and the crucifixion. We, we stop this evening with the momentum and energy of having been communing with the Savior and Him looking us in the eyes. Imagine you being there and having the Savior, the one who's going to go to the cross and then rise from the grave, the same Savior, look at you and say, because I myself will be with you. Always. Always. Would your heart not be pounding in your chest? And be, ex I mean, beyond belief. Because there's going to be times when it gets sad, hard life to remember. I'm with you, Jesus says. And that was when, at that point, they, they would have gathered themselves and they went out to the garden to pray. And they, Jesus knew what was going to happen next. And so the balls are in motion. And we're following Jesus out of the room and, and we've experienced all of this. How are you feeling? Imagine your emotions right now. You've just sat with the King, the Savior. He's told you what's going to happen. He's told you that things are going to get better, that there's a kingdom coming. Where is your spirit going? Because that's going to guide you through Friday and Saturday. When the doubt and the wonder... And, 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 the, and the don't understand of, of what's going to happen to us, what's going to happen next. It's starting tonight. Put yourself there. Pray with me as we end this time. Great and awesome God, help us to, to fully experience this Easter season, though disconnected in, in relation with each other, our spirits are tight and closely knit. Lord, help us to see where we fit into this story right now. What would we do if we were there? How would we feel going in to the garden, walking that trail? Lord, help us to feel it. To get up tomorrow and be prepared to face the music tomorrow as we head in to the trial. Help us to be present spiritually so that we may feel the movement of the Spirit during this time. We lift this moment up to you, Lord. Help us and guide us and help this Easter be a special Easter for us this year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Guys, we'll see you tomorrow. Sleep well. Rest well. Praise God. 
We have each other and we have him. Talk to you tomorrow, friends. Love you. Good night.